Hello everyone, hope you're doing well. It's time to chat about something which a lot of people have talked about in War Thunder since the addition of the Puma. And the idea is should the Puma get the Spike Missile? The Spike Hated Gem is an interesting one. We'll go over how it's actually been in War Thunder for a long time and also uh, at the same time what it is and its relationship to the Puma. One thing I do want to remind you of before we get started is there are Twitch drops ongoing for War Thunder on uh, Twitch, so make sure to come over and get yourself some free content. Uh, there is a link in the description to uh, channels to watch, so you can get yourself some free stuff for War Thunder. Anyway, let's get into the missile and also the platform you could find it on. The information we're going to be looking at is from Eurospike.com, and it goes into all the different variants of the Spike missile. Since it is a family of missiles, which was created by the Raphael Advanced Defense Systems in, of course, Israel. Uh, so this is a product which is used by a bunch of different nations, including the likes of Germany and many others. The first one is the Spike SR. This is a lightweight, shoulder-launched, fully disposable fire-and-forget missile with an effective range of 50 to 2,000 meters. It fulfills the anti-tank operational requirements um, of many, if not most, European armed forces, and it has a art, uh, the Art Seeker technology. It's day-night. It includes an uncooled IAR, high-resolution CCD, as well as an optimized tracker, which is tailored to the needs of the infantry forces in a variety of operational and environmental scenarios. You then have the LR2 spike. This is a fifth generation precision guided missile system designed for the modern warfare and multi-platform, multi-purpose capabilities, including manual, fire and forget, and also just standard fire, observe and update capabilities, as well as abilities of third party target allocation which is launched to grid coordinates with no line of sight, which is based on an internal IMU. The LR2 is lightweight, it has enhanced lethality, and also a standoff um, hit on the ground of 5.5 kilometers and 10 kilometers in the air, which makes it the ideal munition for infantry, as well as light attack helicopters, since they don't have to get involved in the fighting. The Spike ER2 is a multi-purpose, multi-platform missile system which has ranges up to 10 kilometers. The ER-2 has been integrated onto various types of platforms around the world, including attack helicopters, naval boats, as well as wheeled and also tracked vehicles. The relative lightweight and also standoff features of the Spike ER-2, including fire and forget and fire and observe capabilities, with a range of 10 kilometers, makes the Spike ER-2 an excellent weapon of choice for attack helicopters and ground vehicles, allowing them to engage enemy tanks and armored targets well out of detection range. And then you have the Spike Enlos, which is the non-line-of-sight Spike. This is a precision guided missile with a legacy of operational use by the different spikes, uh, Spike user nations. The Enlos is a multi-platform, multi multi-purpose electro-optical missile system with real-time wireless data link for ranges up to 30 kilometers. The Spike Enlos is ideal uh, since its maneuvering PGM is designed for precision attack in standoff situations. The weapon system is integrated today on modern attack helicopters, allowing engagement of targets well out of the air defense range, as well as engagement vehicles in hidden locations and maritime vessels for precision engagement C2C or C2 inner land setups. So as you can see, depending on which spike that we look at, it can be put on a bunch of different vehicles in War Thunder. But also, it already kind of has in many different events. A lot of people have been pointing towards the Mobile Infantry event, as one to show off the Spike's capabilities, since it is on one of the soldiers, the Assault class. But also, at the same time, the Spike has been used in many different forms in the game for several years in different uh, game modes for April Fools. In Warfare 2077, it was on the, I suppose you class it as the Standard Tank, the Minotaur. It was also in the Children of Arrakis event on the little light vehicle which sped around. 
So the idea of these vehicles or these uh, missiles, the fire and forget setups being, uh, I suppose, uh, a little bit alien to Gaijin is not the case. The technology has been around for the longest time in War Thunder, and the only question is, when does it get implemented? And now, when we have a look at the game, the QN506 now has its fire and forget capabilities, so it looks like we're getting to a point now where um, we will get it for other nations as well. So the reason why a lot of people have been talking about the idea of the Puma getting an upgrade is because there are pictures and also pretty uh, big media um, about the Spike LR anti-tank missiles being mounted on the Puma as a launcher. It is also one of the more popular nations when it comes to the game, and a lot of people from Germany um, definitely consume stuff when it comes to War Thunder. So it seems like a natural progression from, you know, the general game, um, or from general real life, to the game. The spike launcher on the Puma seems to be a modular upgrade at the moment, so not standard issue. So what I would do um, is I would actually create another Puma IFE in the game and give it the Spike LR missiles, um, because balancing a the Puma already has uh, obviously had its issues, uh, even with its just standard gun, so why add even more capabilities to it uh, to make it even stronger um, <laughs> instead of, you know, doing it as a separate vehicle so it would be easier to balance? And uh, we'll get into, I suppose, a little mini rant now, um, talking about the vehicle. But understand, hopefully the Puma IFE spike comes, and hopefully it comes at some point. Hi, so it's time to talk about the Puma and its balancing when it comes to the game. Uh, the reason we're doing this is because I feel like a lot of these um, talks about the Puma itself are being disingenuous about its capabilities and how good it actually is uh, when it comes to the game overall. The Puma as a vehicle is insanely strong when it comes to War Thunder. And it's also a vehicle that Gadgen has not been able to balance since it has come out. Um, this vehicle started at 8.3, and as somebody who was playing the Zaklam Tega at the time, uh, because it was when Israel got added to the game, this thing took over games. There were several nukes over and over and over again from people playing this thing because it was just nuts. Then it went up in BR, and then it went up in BR again to 9.3, and if you've played it recently, you will know how strong it is at 9.3. This is easily one of the best, if not the best, um, IFV slash light tanks in the game. It has nuts optics, it has a really good targeting speed on the gun, it has APF SDS, um, it has the good old uh, targeting thing so you can shoot down planes, it has insane survivability since it has the blowout panels, and also you basically have to shoot it like here to be able to kill it, or shoot it here, and most Pumas, if they're played correctly, will just go hull down and you can't deal with them, and then it has this massive fat engine block in the front which, which uh, rounds will get stuck on. It also has a ton of chemical protection so anybody who's stock grinding is absolutely screwed against the puma and it only takes one or two shots of the gun to knock out other people's guns it also has a good old uh it also has a good old electro optical active protection system it has a bunch of smokes this thing is nuts as a vehicle and has been since its introduction into the game it is just insane. And since it's been put up to 9.3, all I've heard from just people who obviously don't play this thing, well, why why don't they give it the spike missile? You know, they put it up in BR enough, it needs the missile now. No, it doesn't. It just doesn't. That's the thing. It's still really good without that. Why why is why is this idea that it needs an extra performance boost? When by its statistics and by its general play, it's showing that it's just nuts and it's going insane and just killing everything as it goes. For China, China gets the QN506 and once again, adding something to another nation that isn't one of the major nations has now reignited topics about adding stuff to major nations. So the QN506 gets a cool thing. It gets a fire and forget missile. 
Woo, big whoop. It's an interesting one, and guess what? You have to completely expose your vehicle right now to be able to use it, because the commander sight doesn't work, and <laughs> because it's bugged as all hell, and you don't have the survivability of the Puma, you don't have the mobility of the Puma, and you don't have the uh, you don't have the general optics of the Puma either, which is one of the huge things about the Puma. You're able to basically scout from absolute miles away. In this thing, you can shoot the launcher and it blows up. In the Puma, if you're hull down, which you should be if you're playing it correctly, there is no way of killing you. Like, it's, it's just infuriating. Sometimes you lose your gunner from the fire, but guess what? You still survive and you're still able to be mobile and run around the place. This thing is so much superior than the QN506, it is actually insane. And the only people asking for these things are the same people who always ask for things uh, for the nations that they play the most. If you're going to add a Puma, you add a separate one with the spike missile. You don't add onto a system that has already gone up in BR by 1.3 or 4 separate BR brackets, even without any changes. The Puma is nuts, and once people realize that, which I know most people have, which is why they don't engage in these conversations, um, then you'll realize how crazy this is. Or maybe, just for once, as a major nation player, which most people are at the end of the day, maybe you could have you could give another uh, nation a mechanic. The vast majority of the mechanics in the game get added to either America, Germany, or USSR first. Then they're spread across when it comes to the history of War Thunder. We did a table and worked it out. It was just insane how many mechanics went to America, Germany, and USSR before everybody else. How about you just let somebody else have a go for once instead of wanting what used to be an insanely broken lineup for Germany at 9-0, at 9-3, at 9-7, be not as insane. But don't worry, it's still insane. The Puma, the, um, the KPZ-70, unfortunately with the nerf, the Leopard 2K, the PT-16T-14, the Leopard 2AV, the Gepard 1A2, the Ozzelot, the Weasel 1A2, you've got all of this, plus a Baglet Panzer that just didn't go up in BR for some reason, and now you want something on top of this machine. How about no? How about somebody just turns around and says what needs to be said about these things? No. Have a good day. I'd just like to thank Millie Draper, Juan the Panda, Nick R. Kupila, Carrion Crow, Gus Irenicus, Pyman, Merciless Reaper, Orange Tail, Teddy, Daniel Stanton, Moxie B. Young, Peter Grayling, Jerry Provolt, Bereen, Alan Hacker, Sem Arslan, Uncle Bean, Derek R., and Lafouche for supporting the channel.